this nails it. This is like a jazzed up version of Windows Movie Maker. And I absolutely just mean that as a compliment. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to another weekly Daily Wednesdays. Plenty of stuff to talk about. Yes, that's right. Yeah. With our fellow Linux loving miscreants and open source enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Vin. That's Jill. We were just talking in the pre-show about sending out audio data bits and all types of other crazy things. Go back and listen to the uncut version because it takes us like, you know, 20, 30 minutes to make one of these shows. We're usually here for an hour or just tune in live every week here on Twitch. Links in the description. But mm -hmm. what do we got this week? We're going to be talking about AI, the good kind of AI, AI. Yeah. Not, not the T-800, no, not the <laughs> T-1000, the kind that's kind of useful and uh, chopping the ends off videos made really 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 easy new version of firefox i'm going to be talking about this guy remember that sound card with the big heat sink on it yeah look at i that. got it i finished <laughs> it there's a video and to write up about it and of course a new update for the raspberry Pi os but first joe brighton have you been up to anything have you did you just yes. stay there since last week when we said <laughs> goodbye and you've been waiting steve waiting has been patiently since. bringing you water yeah, and food, probably, hopefully. <laughs> so, no, we actually had a really fun time uh, playing the Trackmania maps on yesterday's uh, Trackmania stream. They were both fun and challenging. and <laughs> got some good ones in there, Ben, <laughs> this week. <laughs> They're not hard, but we were at the point now. And uh, I think Bodhi joined in last night, too. It's always good when somebody yeah. gets changed. Like, I was only able to get in for 10 minutes. That that's great. Server is always up 24 7 Tuesdays. We get together 10 new maps. We're doing maps from 2013. It's a weird sell because Trackmania is a strange game. It never got a lot of traction in North America. A lot of people have already glossed over, like I've never even heard of this. Big in the EU. And it's not, it's a racing game if you want it to be, but it's also a puzzle game if you want it to be. And we definitely lean more into yeah. the puzzle aspect of it. And it's a good community. Come join us. All the information, if you're a Twitch sub or a patron, link it up to our Discord get the launch codes, come hang out with us. And you don't have to chat with us on Discord, but we're there if you want to. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have you. And we'll be back doing that Friday at uh, 7.30 p.m. A bit later on Fridays, you know, just to get people a chance to, you know, with different schedules. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I've been doing with AI? What, Ben? The past couple of days, Jill. <laughs> I've been blocking it. I've been telling oh. it no. I've been putting my staff down going, you shall not pass. I have. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Because uh, Cloudflare, I use Cloudflare as one of my CDNs. It used to be in the um, web application firewall. You, you could set up a rule to kind of block AI scrapers. It was one of those things, man. I'm like, I'll get around to doing that one day. Never did. Never did. They finally just made it a toggle button. I'm like, that's my type of lazy right there. Click. Let's see what happens. <laughs> just out of curiosity. And I said it and forgot it. And later on, you know, I should probably go check and see if we got any hits. And we got some hits. We got some hits. Nice. Getting hammered by Microsoft. Microsoft <laughs> and OpenAI. Really want to get into interfacinglinux.com. That's interesting. <laughs> I mean, just... <laughs> Cloudflare's going, nay. Be gone. Huh. Amazon's just as bad. I even posted, like, and they're hitting it in, like, blocks. Amazon. I don't know if it was like Amazon, Amazon, or somebody just using AWS. Let's be real. Just trying to scrape it hard to get those answers. Hmm. Amazon didn't care about all of its blocked. Microsoft, I had a good laugh at, though. Why did yeah. I have a good laugh at Microsoft? Well, if you happen to use Bing and you just, you, you Bing interfacing Linux, Bing has yet, after six months, to bless my website with indexing. Oh. It's not there. Stuff that I've written over the years that only exists in one place. You're not going to find it on Bing. Who cares, Vin? It's Bing. You're like, you know what? You're right. I don't really care about Bing. Nor do most people listening <laughs> here. <laughs> I do care about DuckDuckGo, though. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Which effectively just relies on Bing. Now, DuckDuckGo does a little bit better. It actually found the interfacing Linux yeah. YouTube channel. YouTube channel. But since they source everything from Bing, oh. 
there's no information here. If you, if you do a search for anything on interfacing Linux, you're just not going to find it. I found it very laughable that Microsoft is not indexing interfacing Linux, but it desperately wants to trade its AI on the data. Yeah, Get wrecked, very, Microsoft. Very Get absolutely wrecked. Also, you need to think about stuff like this when you're just using a single search engine like DuckDuckGo or Google or Bing. You need to get a second opinion sometimes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Think about that next time you're searching and you can't find anything. Let's get into it. Uh, that, that's AI being amusing. Let's talk about some of the good things. Yes. Some of the good things that we can do with the, what passes for artificial intelligence, right? I yes. want to tell you about Control Plus Revise because Turbo messed up and posted it in our Discord. In fact, I opened <laughs> up our Discord a couple of days ago. And Turbo and uh, that nutter who makes Lutris were just going at it, debugging issues with something. Yeah. And it turns out he's working on a new project. He is, man. And that's what it's called, Control Plus Revise. I have a programmer named Deal With It. I mean, that's what it says on the tin, right? It's designed to help you write more gooder. And I like this idea because I do a lot of writing, but most of it, in fairness, is technical documentation. That means, you know, when I write an article or just a video, it becomes, you guessed it, technical documentation, which is kind of boring, kind of dry to listen to or read. And the one use that I found for what passes for artificial intelligence in 2024, aside from making really creepy photos with too many fingers, that's very entertaining, is feeding a block of text that I've written and just seeing what type of hot take the language model comes up with. With this, if you don't want to use, you know, cloud-hosted stuff, stuff that's going to mind your data, the important thing is this is all locally hosted. This is something you can run yourself. This, this wordsmith even functions as a desktop application. Ah, right? Why? Because there's screenshots. That's how you know. Sign of a good product, right? <laughs> you highlight some text, you tap on a button, it recombobulates everything. And it adds it to your clipboard so you can, you know, paste it out and exp just uh, yeah, maybe, maybe take an idea. You probably don't want to like just paste whatever that. And it works with AMD, NVIDIA, and uh, again, stress this enough, it runs locally. So if you want to go hammer on that, there'll be a link to everything in the show notes over at linuxemcast.com. Joe, you actually got a chance to play around with it, right? Yeah. So I actually didn't get it to control plus revise to fully work but i did get it to launch then it stalls but it is a beta and turbo did say it wouldn't work for everyone but i will continue to work on it i believe it has something to do with the o olama llms i had loaded so and i know turbo and strider like ven was saying we're we're talking about it in chat because strider had some issues and they were debugging back and forth so I will talk to Turbo as well, and I'm sure I will get that fixed. <laughs> and uh, I just want to thank you, Turbo, also for the screen reader support. I thought that was brilliant, and I look forward to playing with it when it's fully functional on my machine. Up next Yay. was a question that I got earlier this week. Technically right. late last week. It was on Sunday. Whatever, Sunday's kind of a flux day. It doesn't exist for me. I'm in a fugue state. Ben, I need to chop the ends off this. I'm like, are you still running Linux? Yes. Seriously? Yes, I am. I promise. I'm like, okay. What's a good way to chop the ends off a of video? Doesn't need to edit. Doesn't need to add, you know, text. Like, I just need to chop the ends off. And that's something you probably heard yourself at home. You know, or you thought to yourself, I just need to chop. What's that mean? You know, you got a video that's almost perfect. It's ready to go. Maybe I need to trim it a little bit from the beginning. Maybe something in the middle I didn't quite want in the video. Or just like right at the end when I was like, hey, look, there are my feet because I didn't stop recording. You want, you want to get rid of that. No fancy edits, no special effects, nothing. Just chop all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there was a tool for this. Now, I'm, I was thinking, you know, my first thing is like, hey, you can do this with FFmpeg. And I'm like, immediately would have lost the dude. Lossless cut. Not only is it still around, it has gotten fancy. You know, <laughs> this is another attempt to put a cozy, warm, loving gooey on top of the mangled beast that is FFmpeg. And for the most part, it does a good job. 
It really does. Um, you can chop out commercials, you know, add video from multiple sources, rearrange the segments, and more. And it does all of this, very importantly, without affecting your video quality by default. So you don't have to worry about things get more pixelated, more crunched. And yes, I know you can do all this with KDN Live, Open Shot, DaVinci Resolve, the loss, lossless cut. Let's get this one superpower. None of those have. It's dead simple. It's absolutely yeah. simple. Because 99% of the time, you don't need to bring a full video editor into the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> and it really reminds me of a very, very important piece of software that we all uh, tend to forget about. Even I had used it at one point and played around with it. And I'm talking about yeah. Windows Movie Maker. This nails it. This is like a jazzed up version of Windows Movie Maker. And I absolutely just mean that as a compliment. It's got an app image, downloaded it, CH modded, just worked, dragged in a video, looked at it. Now, it took me a minute to like get my brain focused on like, how would, I don't like using the word normie, but that's a app description, go about doing this. Where would they think the stuff would be? And it does have an advanced mode, don't worry about it. And it does have options to uh, transcode this stuff out into formats for like YouTube, TikTok. And then like after you do it, you don't end up like this big, chunky, lossless video. And it did a really good job. It likes to juggle a lot, though, Jill. Yeah. It wiggles and jiggles. Like, you open up a menu, it's going to give you some jiggle. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think about really, it? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's so many more uh, menus and, and settings in the program since I, I used it back in, like, 2017 or 2018. Me and Ven were talking about that before the show started. <laughs> and it was, it was even, you know, I had, had less configuration options than it does now. and. I was impressed with how well it worked back then, but now it's even better. And this time I actually downloaded the handy flat pack over at flathub.org and the app image. And they both let how me edit. Could you? It's got a snap right here, Jill. <laughs> it's got a snap I, as I'm well, gonna, I'm yes. I'm going to tell on you. Mark, I'm going to send you the email. <laughs> oh, so I had fun uh, playing around and editing a uh, big buck bunny and doing some quick ed edits and uh, quickly uh, getting those uh, rendered. So yeah, get it, have it there. It's a handy tool. Even if you use something like Katie and Live, like I guarantee you, if we just need to like trim off 30 seconds from a video, I'll beat you with this a hundred percent of the time, no matter what editor you use. Like think yeah. even, you know, I live in DaVinci Resolve. This is a still a great tool to add to your arsenal. Mm -hmm. Firefox. Oh, they've got a new update. Uh, did they add more AI? A little bit, but I don't talk about that <laughs> in this one because that part isn't as important to me because we've talked about it in the past. But anyways, so Firefox 128 was just released and, you know, it has some really cool new features. And I'm just kind of going to go through the ones that are my favorite. One of my favorites is now you can translate just a selection of text instead of the whole page, which is awesome. And, you know, as a result, it's so much quicker because you can just uh, uh, select out the uh, text that you want to translate and it doesn't have to sit there and, and plow through the whole page. So an option has been added to the right click menu to translate text selection. And then a window pops up with the translation of the selected text in your desired language. So it's just really easy and sweet to use. And why didn't anyone else think of that? This is perfect. Mozilla Firefox. Perfect. And also now, when you are in private browsing mode, Firefox will play back protected content from Netflix, woohoo, and other streaming sites. So that's been a feature a lot of us have been wanting, because <laughs> I, I do a lot of uh, private browsing on Firefox. And if you want to read more about the new features and check out the link in the show notes and go grab Firefox 128 from your Linux distributions repository or just download it as a tarball from the official Mozilla website. I'm sure there's two or three people that still, uh, even I have a um, mm -hmm. dev repo for Firefox nightly set up. Yes. I wonder how many people still, very, very few programs. That used to be the norm in the day I was know. going out yeah. to websites. Now, as Windows users call that, oh, that's how you install stuff. You got to go to the website. When, you know, how many times have I seen, oh, I bought an audio interface. I went to the audio interface. It's not looking <laughs> for drivers. I'm like, why would you do that? That's so silly. It should be built into the operating system. Windows habits. It is time. 
to talk about something Linux has been doing before you even knew what a Linux was. Keeping hardware that has been deemed obsolete out of landfills. It's great at yes. that. Woo-hoo. Wonderful at that. It's <laughs> one of Linux's superpowers that we don't sure talk is. about very often. Why? Because it's so you don't get the pats on the head for installing Ubuntu. I don't know, man. I think it's the coolest thing Linux has done. And I talk mm-hmm. about it pretty often because hardware gets reverse engineered or drivers get open sourced. And that means it can continue being supported long after the manufacturer decides they don't want to support it anymore. Why? Because they got the new shiny keys that you need to go buy that. So we're going to drop support at the old one. Now go buy the new one and you can go. Nay. Now we're probably more familiar with taking old server hardware, right? And we take it, we put Linux on it, and we make some use out of it. Like maybe we can try another take at this. Maybe there's another angle to go at this. So I was like, there's been a piece of broadcast hardware that I've wanted to pick up since 2010. And that that like what well, was 2010? That's been like what five, six years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I finally got my hands on one. That's the ASI. Woo-hoo. 5211. Dude, this thing does some really cool party tricks on paper. I remember the first time I saw this, I think it was at um, NAB, National Association of Broadcasters. Like, oh, I want one of those in my system. Why Why would you want a sound card in your system? Even in 2010, it's crazy. That's not a headphone. That's a microphone preamp. You just plug a microphone in here. You're good to go. This thing's got a 60 dB preamp built right into it. You don't have to worry about it. You just click it right in the back and you're done. And it's got onboard DSP. It's got a full-blown equalizer built into it. It's got a noise gate. It's got a compander. I didn't misspeak. Companders are real. Uh. And yes, they can hurt you. Go look up what they are. (laughs) Enter 2024. And here we are. I got the video stuck together. It's about 11 minutes long. But I walk you through this really cool, really fascinating piece of broadcast hardware. But it is broadcast hardware. What does that mean? Well, that means it's going to be fussy. It's not going to work with a lot of stuff. The documentation is just going to be bad. Questionable on a good day. Bad most of the time and usually just outright wrong. And the software that you use with it to interface with it is going to look like it's out of the 90s. But what does it take to get one of these critters up and working on Linux? Well, you're going to need firmware. You're going to need kernels, and no small amount of luck. And that's what I went through. That was my little nod to mm-hmm. LGR right there. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he likes to rub on stuff and make noises. I think it's adorable. Yeah. So what really started out is like morbid curiosity for me quickly turned into just a straight up war of attrition. I've had this thing for a month and it was like, oh, that'd be cool. Pop it in, make it work, do a little video. Quickly turned into, I'm going to make you work. I don't care. There's no option B, only option V on this one. And of course, on Interfacing Linux, the biggest, uh, most frequent comment, I'm like, why is there a ginormous heat sink on it? (laughs) Well, I didn't do it in the video. But if you go to Interfacing Linux, you can find out what's hiding under that Mm -hmm. giant block of metal because I wasn't going to just let that go. Even though this thing did not end up working for my particular use case, why was I interested? Because it's a PCI Express sound card. And I need low latency. I'm a um, low latency snob. It's in a different stratosphere compared to USB. USB is not even playing the same game as PCI, PCI Express. Thunderbolt's pretty close. It's not even there. But like USB, don't talk to me about low latency on USB. It's, it, it's cute. You know, you want to go well, you hug it and pat it on the head till it's doing, it's doing a good job. <laughs> Go check that out. There'll be a link in the description. Do you like playing around with stuff like this? Do you ever just see a piece of old hardware? And you're like, I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. Like, let me just pick this up. I do that every now and then. I'm like, I'm just going to order that and see if I can make it work. And turns out, even though this has been discontinued, it's still going to be powering, you know, people's ham shocks, low power radio stations, whatever they want to set up. Just chug it along until the end of days. Because one thing, like a lot of broadcasters, it's completely ridiculously over engineered. Much like when I talk about Magewell equipment, 
ridiculously over-engineered. These things will outlive all of us. What do we got before we get out of here? Ah, uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi. Pi. I've completely forgotten Raspberry Pi's existed, Joe, because now I've got my <laughs> Elite desk. And I'm like, yes. man, I, I look at the Raspberry Pi, I'm like, I ain't got time for you. Oh, poor little Pi. So a new version of the Debian Linux-based Raspberry Pi OS has been released with lots of new features and UI improvements. One of my favorites is the panel and PC Man FM file manager now come with support for customizing more than two desktops. That's really great for those of you that like to run, you know, several virtual desktops at a time. And as an alternative to Wayfire, the Lab WC Wayland Windows Stacking Compositor can be customized and is now installed by default. Lab WC Wayland can be enabled via the I don't like it. It looks too much like XFC. If I tried to use that, I'd just get mad. Oh. It does actually. It, man. Does. it does. It does. It does. And I would expect right. it to operate. And if it won't, then I'll be mad. Yeah. <laughs> it won't. Yeah, this is so true. Uh, so the Lab WC Wayland actually can be enabled via the Raspi config utility and has theme settings in the PixFlat theme. And this is something really awesome. The first run setup wizard, PyWiz, also lets you enable or disable the new Raspberry Pi Connect feature which we have talked about here on LWW number 429 just a few weeks ago. So go update those Raspberry Pis. I need to update mine too, my Raspberry Pi 5. <laughs> I wonder how many people with Raspberry Pis uh, take any time to ever update them. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of them are used so much for embedded systems and mission critical, so... Those people. Don't That's a polite way of do. saying I got one in a corner I put there four years ago. And I never <laughs> yeah. updated it. I'm like, no, no, no. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's embedded on the third shelf behind the DVD player. <laughs> yeah. Running my mission critical, whatever I happen. I don't even I don't know why. I, I forgot why I put it there, but it's still running. So, yeah. It, yeah. Log into your pies. Maybe, maybe give an update. I don't know. I'd be scared of it. I know when I had uh, the Jitsi server running that Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. it was a you do not update it. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Because it would all break. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of Weekly Daily Wednesdays. As always, thanks for taking the time to listen to us. Join us, watching mm. us live. Plenty of places to catch what we're up to. If you want more, if you just listen to the podcast, you're like, I could use an hour of this. Head over to Patreon. Patreon.com mm -hmm. forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get the live and uncut version. We got that out in the afternoon. Yay. Every single week, MP3. We got the videos up. We got a commercial free version of the video. No ads. You can just download it, take it home. You can put it on your Raspberry Pi that's on the bottom shelf in the corner of your room that you're in <laughs> there. Give it that to you so it can store that one episode of weekly, daily, Wednesdays. Plus, you get to hop into our Discord where we're at the other six yeah. days of the week having rap sessions, and you too can watch uh, Old Strider and Turbo Fight and try to get the his yes. AI thing <laughs> up and working. It, it's always <laughs> fun. And of course, Elderly Entertainment with Trackmania <laughs> on Tuesdays and Fridays where us mm. old people get together <laughs> and we see if we can still get around tracks and we tell the kids yeah. to get off our lawns and we are. <laughs> it's always a fun time. Check that out, LinuxGameCast.com forward slash support. Got a bunch of stuff over there, including a merch store. We appreciate it. But until next week, uh, get out there. Get up to something nefarious and uh, let me know what it is. If it's really awesome, we'll probably <laughs> talk about it. All right, Jill. Yeah. Time for some credits. Yes. We have lots of patrons to thank, including our advisors, Omegas and Artharin. And our executive producers, Barbara, Ant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, Tomaz, David. Our Chicago Kicks people, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasphemia. Sea Monsters, Truck Gills, Veritanuna, Justin, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System T, <laughs> Death Notes, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back Dodger, Rue, Turnover, Can't Get Through Them All, I'm Trying, Chairlings, Douglas, Hitchcock, <laughs> Mirror. <laughs> Douglas Chairlings, a prolific <laughs> author. Yes. <laughs> also, thanks to Mirror and Basil, and everybody dropped a Twitch sub. Yes. I want to thank Basil again for showing us what a hype train was, because we didn't know, now we do. Yeah. You missed yeah. that in the after shows on yes. Saturday. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>